The picture we're getting this morning is one of chaos for the people who were trying to stop the terrible violence in Nova Scotia this past weekend. CBC News has obtained recordings of emergency services communications from Saturday night and on into Sunday morning. They reveal what police and first responders did and did not know as a gunman made his way right across the province. John Northcott is here with more and those audio recordings. John. Heather, from Port-a-Pic to Wentworth to Shubenacadie, we're getting a sense of the trail of the killer and his emergency services tried to respond. Not only police trying to track him down, but ambulances and fire crews as well. Wondering where they should go. Wondering had the suspect been caught at that point. Uh, wondering what they should do next. And trying to come to deal with, with the, the aspect of it, meaning not only were people being killed and shot, Houses being set on fire, all of this happening, much of it at night. We're getting a sense of it through those tapes uh, as we are listening back to them. Uh, when you begin with the first instance that something had happened, the call coming in at 1026. By 1038, fires are reported. Let's listen to that. Is there also a structure fire out this way? Uh, nothing like that reported. We're seeing huge flames of smoke from where we are. We did off in a distance, uh, say 10 or 11 o'clock from your location, that'd be where you'll be going for a Civic. Yeah, copy, that's uh, exactly where it is. So the reference there, 10 or 11 o'clock, effectively trying to direct them as to where from where there they are, those uh, fires then are. At 1044, GSW, gunshot wound, reported. That means a call for ambulances. We're seeing more ambulances requested at 11.01. The reference to police, RCMP, quote, slowly bringing people out. The inference there is that those people are not alive. At 11.21, the assailant caught is the question. Let's listen. Do you know if the uh, caught the assailant? No, not for sure. It's in quite a ways. The actual house, they're bringing the victims out to that intersection from the actual scene. But no, they don't know if they've caught them. I don't know. So that is a 1021. By 1132, that tweet goes out from the RCMP. The tweet that has been subsequently criticized in uh, many quarters for not being an alert on people's cell phones. But still, uh, as uh, the evening unfolded, we aren't hearing, and this is worth noting, there will be an exchange between RCMP officers themselves within the field. We don't have those tapes yet. At some point, as information, more information is released to the public, we may hear those. The next morning then, the spree continues with attacks and murders in Wentworth and then continuing on down the highway with the killer progressing on down that road. And we had that interaction with the officer, the one that turned deadly for Constable Heidi Stevenson. Her car then, after a collision and a firefight, a fire breaking out, that fire spotted just after 11 a.m. by a helicopter. Here's that exchange. We're still ahead of vehicle fire at the exit on Highway 2. It's actually looks like might be a police car involved. There's other police vehicles there. We just wanted to bring it to your attention. Minutes after that, the pursuit continued, ending in that firefight at that gas station. At that point, an hour or two before that, in fact, we had the confirmation from police that they were looking for someone who looked an, awfully lot, an awful lot like them in a apparently marked cruiser and in an RCMP uniform. Heather? So, John, obviously these audio bits are uh, very helpful as police continue to try to trace the path of the gunman. Something else that will help them is it's just a short piece of video, but it is remarkable. Share that with us, John. Yeah, again, coming out of that realization earlier in the day, some kind of tip from whom we do not know, but it was clear from the video that we're going to show you. Uh, this then on that highway down from Wentworth uh, on the way to Shubenacadie, and then on uh, for the scene when he was eventually shot by police. Have a look at that. It's hard to believe that is not a real RCMP cruiser, but it is not. It is a fake. The killer gets out, takes off his jacket, puts on a yellow vest, and then, and you can see the calm demeanor, drives off. He knows at this point he has killed many. He is the subject of a massive police air and ground search. And there you can see the calm, clearly not in any kind of panic there. All of this will be 
in addition to the tapes we've heard, in addition to the massive forensic evidence, and video like that will go to motive, will go to where he was and what he did when he was there, as the search for answers continues. Heather? And again, from RCMP, we heard yesterday, John, they're putting together even a more thorough timeline, which we should get within a day or two. So again, those pieces of information minute feeding minute. into that. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you very much, okay. John Northcott. And of course, you'll continue to cover this over the weekend.